So you ever wonder why your microprocessor in your computer needs such a big heat sink? Why does it get so darn hot? Um, let's look at a data sheet here. Uh, this is for the i7 uh, processor. That's an Intel i7. This is the Dash 900 version. So what is VCC on these parts? Well, as transistors shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink, they can't be 5 volts anymore. They can't even be 3.3 .3 volts anymore. This one has a maximum voltage of 1.375. That's, that, that's as much as it goes. Minimum of 0.8. So let's just say for sake of example, uh, this part's being run at 1 volt, okay? So 1 volt. Um, so uh, if it's just operating at 1 volt, it must be operate really, really cool, right? You know, that's not much power. Well, you look down here, it's one volt at 145 amps. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 145 amps. So um, if you take one volt and multiply it by 145 amps, that's 145 watts. And that's why they get hot. And that's why you need to big, get a big heat sink, <laughs> a big fan, <laughs> or water cooling. Um, so yeah, they, they consume a lot of energy. Um, but this is CMOS. Isn't CMOS supposed to be low power? How can little tiny CMOS transistors add up to 145 amps? All right, so let's take a look at that today. Um, so what we're gonna be looking at is, um, let's see here. We're gonna be looking at an inverter package. This can be a 7404. I just happen to have 7414s. And um, I'll be using the H, I'll start out with using the HC version, the high speed CMOS version, HC. So it's all CMOS. I'm gonna input a clock and I'm gonna run it through the part like this. So I'm using the entire part, right? So each one of these is maybe what, half a dozen transistors. So, you know, maybe there's 40 transistors total in a little package like this. Um, and so we're just gonna take a look at the, uh, the current draw, okay? So we're gonna put five volts into the part, okay? That's its nominal, uh, its nominal rating. And this is gonna be microamps. So how many microamps is the part drawing? Well, right now I don't have a clock going in. It's in steady state. I just have the input tied to ground. And so we're, we're drawing 0, 0.00 amps, microamps. So that's why these little CMOS parts are so good. They're very, 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 very low, okay? Let me, uh, let me pull out this part, okay? And I'm gonna put in a 74LS uh, part, okay? LS was low, low power shocky, LS. Okay, let's put that in, let's measure him. All right, and Oh man, we're going way too big, right? So three milliamps. So the part draws three milliamps. Um, I, I put the LS part in here. So, and I just have the input grounded. There's no clock or anything. It's just being grounded. So three milliamps. So we go from three milliamps to zero, zero microamps. So that, that's why they were so good, okay? So let's go back to the CMOS world. Um, and, uh, oh, just for fun, let's just for fun. Let's put in a, a 7404. Okay, that's not even the LS version. This is just 7404. This is like from the way back days. All right, let's put him in and see, see how much he draws. And 15 milliamps, <laughs> 15 milliamps, yeah. So we went from 15 milliamps to three milliamps to basically nothing, okay? All right, so let's uh, get this all set up again. All right, let's hook up some power and uh, go back to microamps. Okay, so no microamps. Okay, so now we're gonna input a clock, okay? I, I have a clock set up and uh, right now it's set to one kilohertz, okay? One kilohertz and we're gonna insert the clock into this thing. And so this is the clock, I'll put it in here. All right, and then we'll see how much current draw that we have, okay? So uh, with a one kilohertz clock, it's gone up to 0.8 microamps. So we are drawing current. And why are we drawing current? Well, it's because um, whenever the 
device switches, it goes from a zero state to one state for a very, very brief point in time, it's drawing a lot of current. Just for a very, very short little amount of time, it draws a little bit of current. But it's only still only 0.8 microamps, okay? So I'm going to change the frequency here. This is one uh, kilohertz. This is 10 kilohertz. 10 kilohertz, look, we went up by a factor of 10. We went from 0.8 microamps to 8 microamps because we're clocking faster, okay? Now let's go up to, uh, let's see here, one, yeah, this is 10, this is 10. This is 100 kilohertz. We've gone up to 80, okay? Can you see that? Turn that back on. So we've gone up to, we've gone up to 80, right? Here's 10 kilohertz, one kilohertz. Here's uh, 100, hertz, 100 hertz, right? So you can see that each one is a factor of 10 and each, each uh, amount of frequency is up by a factor of 10. Let's take the function generator and turn it up. Look at that. As I turn it, I'm going from 100, micro, uh, 100 uh, kilohertz up to one megahertz. I'm turning it up, turning it up, turning it up. There's one megahertz. And guess what? Factor of 10. Okay, now we're at eight, 800 uh, microamps. And so uh, you can say, well, it's still not many microamps. You know, how do you get to 145 amps <laughs> in that Intel part? Well, this is what, 40 transistors? How many transistors are in I7? A billion? I don't know, a lot. <laughs> so it adds up, right? <laughs> it adds up. Okay, so that was a 74HC. Um, let's put in a 74C part. Okay, 74C part should be maybe better, maybe not. It is, it's a little bit better. It went from 80 to 74, okay? It's still gonna go crazy if I start turning up the knob over here, but um, yeah, um, it's better. And let me uh, do one more test. So I went from a 74HC14 to a 74C14, okay? And now I'm gonna put in a fake Chinese 74, no, I mean uh, a 4110, 40, with the 4109s or 4106s? Uh, 4106s. 4106s are exactly the same part as a uh, 74C14, okay? So, in fact, uh, this part here has both part numbers on it. It has 74C14 and 4106. It has both part numbers on it. It's the exact same part. Let's put in one of these Chinese parts and see what it does. And there you go, look at that, 29. It's better, <laughs> it's better. Wow. All right, let's turn him up. Yeah, that's interesting. Let's, uh, okay, let's do the whole series. Uh, we're at 100 kilohertz. We have the 74HC14. Uh, it's measuring 78.6 microamps. Let's put in the 74C14, also known as a 4106. Let's put that one in. He measures 72 microamps. And then let's put in the Chinese 74. No, it's a Chinese, actually, it's a Chinese 4106. Uh, but it doesn't test as one. When, when I did the tests, it only tests as an HC part. It'll only go up to 7 volts before it won't go up to the 20 volts that these parts should go at. But. It's very nice. It's a very modern process, whatever they're using. So it's only 29 microamps. Let's take it up to one megahertz and see what happens. At one megahertz, it's uh, 303 microamps. And we'll put in the official part, which is a national part. 
And, uh, that one is 763 microamps. So there you go. Uh, the fake Chinese part is actually really good for things that it's not marked for, <laughs> right? It's a good part. It's just got a fake mark on the outside of it. So there you go. Okay, so that was just a description of why does your microprocessor have 145 amps? Well, that's because it's got a bazillion, uh, a bazillion transistors, and they each one maybe have one microamp, but you know, you get a lot of them, you get a lot of amps. <laughs> and the other is, uh, you're not going at one megahertz, you're going at 300 and, uh, three gigahertz, right? So you've gone from one megahertz to three gigahertz. You've gone from 40 transistors to a bi billion transistors. Yeah, it's going to add up really quick.